Good morning, everybody. It is 7 a.m. Very, very early. Didn't quite work out as we had hoped. Some of these things had great highs, some had big lows, some of them flatlined. Trust, whatever the idea, it's like, does it bring people closer to music? And we're gonna have an awesome day today. The microphone is working. Check. Um, we are gonna go to the Propelify Innovators uh, Conference. Really excited to have an awesome day. Look forward to hanging out with you guys. Yo, what's up? Thanks for riding along with me today. Looking forward to an awesome day. So we're going to this event called Propelify, who I was invited to by a, a guy that I met um, at the event Speak Like a Leader. It's the Simon Sinek workshop named Magnum. What a badass name, Magnum. The name's Mags for sure. And we are gonna have a great time meeting a whole bunch of people that are in startups, um, different ventures, and talk about some of the new things we got going on, meet some new people, make some connections, build some relationships, make some new friends. Nothing in life, in my opinion, is more important than relationships, meeting new people, and learning new things. So I'm looking forward to hanging with you today, and we're gonna have a great time. Later! So we're gonna have a ton of fun today uh, at this event, Propelify. I'm looking forward to it. If you need anything, if you need anything, yeah, if you need anything, just uh, give me a shout and I'll come right over. What the hell am I saying? All right, so it is 8.50. Been driving about an hour and 50 minutes. We're a few miles out, and I am looking forward to getting there. And we're gonna have a great day together. Here we are. <laughs> and Braulio? Braulio. Braulio. Yeah. Where are, you guys, where are you guys from originally? Brazil. Brazil? Yes. Brazil yeah, also? Brazilian. Oito bem. Oito bem. If I don't, if I don't actually, you know, if I don't actually uh, find something at my job right. that keep, keeps me engaged, you know, I, I get bored. The challenge is, you know, most people their whole life they're taught to make money by having a job. And if you have to trade your time for dollars and trade time for money, no matter how much you make, you know, you can make millions of dollars and make a ton of money, but the challenge is you can never stop doing it, so you never have ownership of your life. So, and what happens is when you have to work 40, 50, 60 hours a week, you don't own your life. You're a slave to whatever you're doing, because if you don't perform, you can't make money. So the only way I believe you can ever truly live the way that you're meant to live and do what matters, do your why, and live that truly, is to develop assets and own companies that'll produce income in the background. And for some people that's millions of dollars, but it doesn't have to be. I mean, most people, if they made 150 or $200,000 a year of passive income, that gives them the financial freedom then to do whatever they're passionate about. And be able to do what's most important. Sure. Yeah, when you get clear, when you get clear on what you want and how you want to live, you know, it gets a lot easier, right? You know, you have a filter. One Can of the you big... get that tunnel vision? Yeah. I don't have that yet. Yeah, the, the it's, most it's important it's thing blurry. is to pick something. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. most people, they spend their whole life trying to say, I'm not sure what I want to do. Most of the battle is just choosing where you want to go. If you choose where you want to go, you might change your mind. But if you don't choose a direction, you just go around nowhere. Fantastic speakers throughout the day. Funny. And Hoboken is, uh, you know, I, we're proud that... Interactive experiences, great food, partners, more stages, and a startup competition. There's, I mean, there's no better way to be inspired and fired up and connect with like-minded people. So take advantage of this opportunity. I was, I was nobody. I, he had no reason to be nice to me. I was new in the industry. Can't beeline straight up. When was it? Late 2010. Okay. And he just introduced himself, um, said hello, 
and wanted to get to know me made me feel like I was the only guy in the room, and that's a special He's quality. He's good at that. He's very good at that. So uh, we just formed the relationship from there. He E stands for education, and the biggest reason why is that the people are teaching are not in touch with where education is going. They are not teaching the real world skills that people need to know, and it's actually the opposite. Most people go to college because they think it's the right thing to do, and when they come out of college, they are in so much debt that they actually can't pursue the dreams that they want to pursue to begin with. Meaning you have to go deep into an art or deep into a science, because anything else is going to be offshore or outsourced to Costa Rica or China or you name it. What does going deep in an art mean? Being smart, being creative, coming up with ideas that a machine can't do. Being deep in the science is understanding how they use the machines. But if you want a career in middle management where you're gonna work your way up the corporate ladder, you're gonna find yourself in a really bad position very quickly. So that's why I tell parents of young people going to the world, go deep into an art, go deep into a science. But what's the number one major in colleges? College of General Studies, Liberal Arts, you're learning basically a whole lot of nothing that's not applicable coming out. Education needs to change. Still being me with them because that was me. That's me. And I want you to be Chief Heart Officer. And I knew exactly what he meant. There was no definition, there is no job description. I don't know if I'll ever write one, but. Uh... Sort of private VIP lunch area, networking, event security. So you're gonna check this out. I got a hilarious story for you guys. I'm gonna tell you guys in a minute here. Check this out. All right, cool. All right. So I'm here with my buddy Mark. Uh, he's gonna tell you about his, his some stuff he's got going on. But you gotta tell him that story that just happened. Cause that was the funniest friggin' thing that's happened all day. All right. So Anthony and I are sitting here in the tent right behind us. And we're talking about what's the value, the value of meeting connections. Because yeah. him and I have just been shooting for the last hour and a half, two hours, yeah, yeah. and it's been a really awesome connection. And then we talk about, okay, what's the value of connections in these, in these, these networking events? Right, right. And you have all these people that just like, you have what, two types of people. One type of per person is like this, you know? You meet a couple people, you build a relationship, and it's awesome. You can meet up for drinks later. Then you have the other type of person which this type of person is the quantity over quality. They are, hey, here's my business card. Hey, here's my business card. Hey, here's my business card. I don't give a shit about you. Here's my business card. What can I get from you later? Transactional, that's all that matters to me. So I'm sitting here telling Anthony about a story that was four days ago. City, it was very intimate atmosphere. A he says he's like, there's 20 people 20 there, people. like a small event, small event, and out of the 20 people that are there, there may have been like two other people that were like actually genuine. It was just like, yeah, all right, I'll listen to what you have to say and not just wait for my turn to talk. So the one guy who was there, who was so 17 of those people were probably you know transactional, but the one guy who was there was all about. Oh, was yeah, just yeah, yeah. causing an uproar. He, dude, this guy kept asking. He kept like, he's the most transactional person I've ever seen. I actually saw him at an event two months ago, so I tried to avoid him at this event. Meanwhile, I'm telling, in the midst of telling Anthony this story. You're saying he chased me down. You're like, he chased me down out of the event. And he's like, hey man, can I have your card? And he's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, dude, whatever, you know, because he's a nice guy. So he's like, yeah. And the guy's like, yeah, and he starts like trying to sell him kind of some deal, like pitching something. <laughs> so then at this point in the story, as he's saying that. Yes, as I'm saying, okay, here, the, the value of just the business card. As I'm saying this, who the hell taps me on the shoulder but this guy this guy's been sitting there listening to us and i thought like he was just listening to our conversation and he's like hey i'm that guy <laughs> now that's not even the funniest part that's like what are the chances the best part is this the best part is oh you're the guy who's building the data gap that's great let me get your business card. I'm actually have a project that we can leverage together. This guy, the whole thing that we're talking oh about. Oh my God. He did it again. He did didn't it, even he, get a shit. He used the segue into the conversation that I don't give a shit about anything and I'm gonna do it again. You know, like, <laughs> holy cow. So, it was awesome. the it moral of the story epic. is look out, look out for that dude. If right. we can find him, don't be that dude. Don't, don't be that, be that, guy. that dude. No, ever. absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Having an awesome time here. Um, going to walk over to see Ariana Huffington speak now. Having a great time. And, uh...
Bye, Propellify. Had a lot of fun with you. Had an awesome time at the Propellify event. Made a whole bunch of new friends. It was a blast. I'm talking to the most famous person of the entire vlog, the most important person in the world, Callan Davis. Callan, what do you want to say to your fans? Well, you just call me Callan Davis. Oh, shoot. Did we get divorced? Uh, why would you call me Callan Davis? Because it says that in my phone and I was distracted. I had too much mental... I your phone. Yeah, I never changed it. Oh, my God. <laughs> And usually it comes up by love, but for some reason it came up Callan Davis with that guy that's also named Callan Davis's face. Oh my gosh, that's funny. Oh, we're going to like a party networking event in the city with, uh, going to grab some drinks with some friends. And we look forward to hanging out with you guys more. Catch you later. Love halal food. So me and Callan just met two new friends. With some burgers. With some, With some burgers. burgers. Yep. Check this party out. Okay. It's a badass party. You guys having yeah. fun? Yeah, we're having a great time. Making it rain? Making it rain. Do you guys rain. have any like special impression you want to do? Or? That would be Frank. That would be me? Uh, <laughs> you got anything on the you, spot? You put me on the spot. No well, pressure. I guess like one day I'm going to have to commit to making videos or doing something. Um, so maybe one day okay. we'll, try to, we'll try to get back on yours. And we'll feature you. Exactly. And I'll, right. I'll feature you on one of mine. That's the there man. You go. Sounds good. Yeah. Lay it on me. What do you want to say? Oh, cheers. <laughs> Ready for the weekend. I love it. Why not standard party? You're funny. Mm. Hey guys, just wrapping my day up, about to go to bed. Wait a second! <laughs> Woo! How big is your vision? Does it have enough room to have other people involved? Because if your dreams and goals and visions aren't much bigger than anything you could ever accomplish, why would anyone else need to be a part of your vision? If, if it's just you, it's about you. It doesn't make sense. So you need to know that. You need to keep that alive. You need to have those feelings. You need to be able to get to that place every day of reminding yourself and being in your future, the future that you want. Maybe it's on that yacht cruising and you think of the smells and the times and the things. Maybe it's starting a charity. Maybe it's you're at a ribbon cutting ceremony for a hospital that you've built and you think of the thousands and tens of thousands of people's lives that will be saved because of the money in the hospital that you open. Maybe it's a program you want to open. Maybe it's you want to be able to, when the phone call comes, because it's not if, it's when the phone call comes about somebody in your family getting ill and having a sickness to be able to pay the medical bills and be with them. Because it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when that that's going to happen to everybody's family. Are you going to be the person that they call?